fired, and then we're gonna look at DeAndre Swift right after. Uh, here he is. Kevin, what attracted you about the Bears and what they're building? Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, it, it's a blessing to be here. Um, I've gone on year nine in this league. Uh, to, to be playing this long uh, or to even get to this year nine has is, is, is been a huge blessing. Something I've dreamed about as a kid. Um, but for, for the Bears specifically, specifically, um, this defense, uh, I really like what Coach uh, Matt is building here uh, just as a team. Uh, there's a lot of things to be excited about. But like I said, this defense um, has a lot of great pieces here for sure. A lot of people like this secondary, defense. What? He just signed David to, to a do with big these stage. Defense. I really uh, thank Holly and him. He's a really great player. Um, and obviously, you know, getting with uh, Brisker, Jaquan, uh, I think he's going to be a really, he's a really good extended player as well. But obviously it's a lot of people he's from Kyler Gordon. Obviously uh, Tyreek Stevenson uh, was a rookie last year. So like was doing the secondary. And he did his homework. Montez, he know but, about all them young uh, boys. Who obviously brought in the trade. Actually Montez went to my rival high school, uh, Stevenson High School down in Georgia. So okay. like I said, a lot of great pieces and obviously uh, two really good linebackers. So excited about this defense and, uh, just excited about the prospect of what we can build in this team and uh, the challenge of obviously trying to knock De uh, Detroit off the high horse. When you, when you sat down to look at this defensive backfield, how much did you know already and how much did you need to learn? And, and you mentioned a couple of these guys by name. What do you think of their game? Uh, well, first and foremost, you know, I, I watch a ton of film, obviously. Um, so, you know, probably like he likes saying, obviously, that's his word. Come on, get it together. Oh, well. Ad. Let me mute this. We don't listen to ads. All right, here we go. Half of the year last season, uh, I was just kind of, you know, obviously stuff like that was popping up on film, how well these, those guys were playing. Um, but like I said, I mean, I know a lot of these guys. Obviously, I've been watching. Uh, he basically Brisker said it was and, it was hard not to hear about that. Obviously, uh, yeah, Kyle Gordon, the, the slot, he's a twitchy guy, too. He's really good. And Tyree Stevenson was a rookie last year, so I think he played pretty good as well, too. So, uh, that's like I said, just kind of watching them on film and kind of just seeing uh, the guys they had. Now, obviously, I feel like it'd be a really good piece to kind of uh, add into the secondary from a leadership perspective, for sure. The vision that uh, Coach Zebrafus shared with you about what he wants that defensive backfield to, to do this year. Would it be successful? I mean, it'd be great. Uh, I think that's Bayard would be our oldest uh, on his team. Defensive back, uh, and he's he thirty. And play well, and obviously for everybody else is twenty four and under. Uh, playmaker that always been. Jalen Johnson career. will probably start the season you know, at be myself. age twenty five. Um, obviously, I'm going to be one of the elder statesmen on the back end. So uh, there you go. Like I said elder just that leadership perspective, uh, coming in, doing everything the right way, and uh, leading by example, but also uh, vocally as well. So yes, sir. I'm, I'm excited for sure. Are you motivated by you talk about being an elder statesman? Are you motivated by showing, trying to show that you can still run with those guys at thirty? Uh, nah, not at all. I'm not motivated. By, and things like that. Yeah, I mean, not. Nah, I wouldn't say that's a motivation. Uh, I find motivation every single year, but my mm -hmm. motivation for me is just continue to do what I've been doing. My Keep career. doing what you've been doing uh, for eight not years. Not necessarily worry about age or nothing like that. Um, I think my film proved that I can still run. I can still do all those good things. Uh, so like I said, I'm just. I'm excited about the prospect of being one of the I – mean, I've been a vet for a while in the league now, but I'm, I'm just excited about uh, the younger guys and things that I've obviously seen on film but continues to be a, be a resource, you know what I'm saying? I think at this point uh, it's all about service, you know what I'm saying? Service in this team, yes, service sir. in this community, but obviously servicing these guys in the locker room as much as I can. You got to see this defense up close during your time in Tennessee. What appeals to you about the fit in a Matt Eberflux defense for you? Yeah, like I said, uh, I played against Matt. He was in he was in Indianapolis for a while, so I obviously played against him. But like I said, just in this defense period, I just see a hungry a hungry defense. I see guys that want to be successful. I see guys having fun playing together, making plays. Mm -hmm. And uh, them boys do have a lot of fun on this defense. Uh, so that's what kind of second half of the season. At least. And like I said, just having a lot of pieces already kind of in place on this defense, I could just come in and, and do what I need to do. Uh, to help this team and help this defense, you know, take it to the next level. It's been the key for your health. I mean, to go nine years and not have major injuries, uh, especially at a position that's so physical. How have you been able to do that? Come on, don't First jinx it. Uh, don't jinx his health. This, this game, uh, <sighs> my Bravers always have this quote you tell the team, like, it's 100% guaranteed injury rate. You know, at some point you're going to get either injured, you hurt, banged up, whatever it may be. Yes. Uh, but I've been blessed. 
uh, I think I take body maintenance and just uh, my career very seriously uh, when it comes to off the field, recovery, uh, nutrition, um, doing all those things. And I think that uh, that's something that um, not to say that I can bring to the team or bring to the guys, but just watching me and how I take care of my body and things like that. The man hasn't uh, missed the game. You know, they say availability is your best ability. And so that's been definitely one of my best abilities for sure. How do you I hate be that. A, I hate when you come into a new when people team say you talk that. about being a resource for the other people guys. People be available what tangible things? Suck. What do you usually do to be become a leader, especially with a new group of guys? Well, the first thing I always try to do um, with any group of guys is first earn their respect. Um, and I think of one of the best ways you earn their respect is uh, by showing up every single day, working extremely hard, uh, studying in the classroom, um, mm-hmm. practicing. I've, I've never missed practice before in my career mm. other than for the birth of my children. But, you know, being available, being there, uh, being a good resource. I, and I think once you earn that respect, um, you can kind of gain that, you know, not leverage, but you kind of gain just that respect of the guys. So then you can actually vocally. Leading by example, uh, like you kind of have a little bit of clout with the guys, I would say. So. Uh, that's the first thing I want to do, earn the respect of my teammates, my coaches, everybody in the building uh, to let guys know that how much I really care and uh, how much this thing means to me. And uh, I think that's just one of the few ways that you start off by being a leader, just by earning guys' respect. So you've never missed an NFL practice to the injury? Correct. That's crazy. Here we go. We got another one. I'm going to mute it real Step quick. In. We, we, we not doing that. All right, here we go. Oh, damn, y'all gonna give us another one? I know that don't stay 30 seconds. Oh, hell no. Let me see. Oh, I can skip it. My bad. Okay, right back to it. That's crazy. 30 seconds. I mean, I wouldn't, crazy. I wouldn't have some vet days off and nothing like that, but <laughs> <laughs> materialize just yet. But. You keep that going. Yeah. You mentioned that you know, that you know Coach Eberflus's defense from your time in Tennessee and, and from watching film. Uh, what do you make of him as a play caller? It's something he took over here last year, and, and the defense seemed to turn around uh, pretty good. Well, I don't know yet. Obviously, I haven't been in the huddle or nothing like that. I don't know the calls. I Obviously, I haven't went over no football stuff just yet. Right. Um, but football I'm is just football. Just getting in the building. Defense, there's only so many ways you can run cover three, cover two, cover four, whatever it may be. Uh, so I'm excited, obviously, to get into the film room and uh, get into the playbook and kind of see how they do things differently here. A lot of it's probably just going to be mostly terminology. I played a lot of defenses. So, yep. Uh, I'm and glad he when said I get that. With a coordinator for a little bit, I can kind of start to anticipate what type of calls he's going to make. So I want to be able to be that that second coach on the field, that quarterback uh, of the you know, defense, being, uh, that communicator on the back end. Yeah, Kevin, you mentioned a lot of the the names on this defense and the direction you see this team going. At, at what point did you really kind of inform yourself on the guys in this group and kind of the direction of this team, and and how do you view that moving forward? Like what this team can really be. Uh, I mean, I think that's that's something that you we, we're going to build during OTAs and uh, build during training camp. Uh, our identity, because I think every single year um, that you're in this league, every single year you have to you have to reestablish yourself. Yeah, you know, I know these guys were you know coming off of uh, the second half of the year, you know they was playing pretty good, but I think you always have to try to reset reset the clock and reset everything and go out there and you know go earn it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I think we have the pieces, but it's all about putting it together. It's, last year's success doesn't dictate this year's success at all. So, um, like I said, I'm excited about the guys that we do have. But at the end of the day, we got to go out there and put the work in and, and come together and bond together. And uh, like I said, I think if, if we have the pieces, so it's all about putting the work in. Kevin, when discussions between you and the Bears started, did the uncertainty at the quarterback position make you hesitant at all with coming to Chicago, or is that even a fact? Why no, would that affect him? Uh, my responsibility is be the best safety that I can possibly Right. Why would quarterback affect uh, him? And, that, and that's what I do. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Terrible question. I don't, I don't make those Mariano. decisions. Obviously, they don't pay me enough, and I'm not uh, – not high enough in the organization to even be a part of the discussion. So those type of things don't matter, uh, in my opinion. Um, I think uh, I've been in this league long enough to know that if you got a good guy behind center, uh, we can do some great things. And I think uh, no matter what decision that they make as an organization, I think it would be the right one. Yeah, you're, yep. you're a two-time All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler. But you got traded. Obviously, the Eagles made a decision to move on. How does, how does that kind of fuel your fire to show that, you know, that, that was a mistake? You still are at the top of your game. Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, – I've never been in the business of trying to prove anybody wrong. Uh, I've always been in the business of proving myself right. Um, you know, just over my entire career, I've always been, uh, rather if it was um, underrated or anything like that, uh, I just always, like I said, I just try to 
how to prove myself, right? I know what type of player that I am. I know what type of player I've been my entire career. Uh, and I will seek to prove myself right again. I've uh, been working my behind off already just this, this off season. Uh, so like I said, I'm excited to come in and be that, be that piece for this defense uh, and, you know, display my ball hawking skills and things like that. I'm sure with the pieces that we have, it, it, it'll be on, it'll be on show for real. Let's go, Kev. released earlier this month, and then I think it was nine days later, you're signing. What was it like exploring your options at that point? Did you, did you get a sense of how many teams were really looking oh, at the, you? The and Bears what you want signed him before the free agency. Fast matter you did. Yeah, I mean, because uh, he was released. It, it, was, it was new for me for so sure. He was able Never to go been ahead a free agent before. Um, I wouldn't say it was like nerve wracking or anything like that. Um, obviously, I knew I, w- I would bounce on my feet pretty quickly. Um, but like I said, uh, when I obviously got the call from my agent about, you know, the Bears and things like that, uh, it, it was exciting for me. It was a exciting prospect, obviously, already knowing the team, kind of going down the roster and the pieces that we have. Uh, I'm always up for a really good challenge. And I think just with this division and, and, and the team that they have, the young guys and, and just the energy around here, uh, I think it's going to be an exciting time this year. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Go from all those years in Tennessee and then get traded midseason and start 10 games. Like, what went into that? Because that seems like that doesn't seem like a pretty easy thing to pick up a brand new defense. And yeah, he went to a right defense. Away. Yeah, it was a whirlwind for sure. backs were uh, terrible. I, I got back from London. I got traded like on a Monday or something like that. Um, it was a whirlwind. Uh, you know, I'm not oblivious to the fact that guys change teams all the time in this league. Uh, but for me, obviously, being somewhere for so long, I'm a big routine, regimen-based guy. And so kind of all that getting thrown off uh, and going up to Philly. Um, but, I mean, being a professional football player, it's our job to make the hard look easy. Yep. You know, nobody really – nobody cares if you got traded midway through the year, just kind of what we had to deal with as a team. Uh, but I definitely think that – I did they the best up and handle your business was regardless uh, of what never, happened. Never missed the practice, never missed the game there either. That's insane. Uh, that is crazy. Be a piece Iron of man. You know, it just didn't work out. And sometimes that's just like, um, but like I said, I think I, I played pretty well, you know, on the, as far as what the circumstances was there. Kevin, uh, you mentioned Jaquan. Have you reached out to him? And how do you envision your, your pairing together? Yeah, well, a few guys on the defense already reached out. And I, I know a couple guys on the team. I played with uh, Blazing Game in Tennessee, Nate Davis, Demarcus Walker too. Uh, but he reached out, and uh, I think we'll get together sometime this offseason, train a little bit to kind of start that bonding process early. So, yep. like I said, I'm excited. I played with a guy in Tennessee, uh, Kenny Vaccaro, who was a really good safety force. I kind of see that, uh, see a lot of lot of him, you know, in, in both of those guys. He's, he's a really good player, uh, guy that likes to talk, and, and uh, guys like to hit. So, uh, love playing with a guy like that. That was Kevin Byer. That's crazy. I did not know he didn't miss a practice. That that's I don't know many play. I don't think I know. I don't think any players on this whole whole entire roster can say that they have not missed a practice due to injury.